good afternoon, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. In the last light of the day, what me and my sleepy dog would like to talk to you about is actually one of my favorite video games, Stardew Valley, which of course was made by Concerned 8. What I would like to talk to you specifically is about 10 things that Stardew Valley got right. I am actually an indigenous environmental scientist, um, and I specifically studied environmental science and development studies. And I think this game has a really great combination of both of those. One thing that Stardew Valley immediately gets right is the idea that farming is inherently risky. Your crops are always going to be susceptible to things like vermin, pests, disease, um, blights. Historically speaking, it is a life way that can be very unpredictable and harsh and take a lot out of you. Most societies don't want to resort to until they have a really large population of people that they have to sustain. Of course, if you are then an agricultural society, you are going to have to be settled into a singular place. Stardew Valley shows this really well insofar as making you have to mitigate those risks with scarecrows, with lightning rods, showing you how you can be at the risk of your environment and even the local witch. As soon as I step out in my farm, and this of course will vary by player, but Stardew, as I walk across my fields, you can see that I have entire fields that are devoted to singular crops. So in this case, I have cauliflower, and I have an entire field of cauliflower because it's a really valuable crop. Monocropping is how most large-scale farming is done across the world. Simply put, it is you have an entire field of a single crop. We see this a lot in the Midwest of the United States, so entire fields of corn or wheat or soy. Also, all three of these are, are subsidized heavily by the government. If you're fortunate enough to, in your first season of spring, grab strawberries, you will learn immediately come the next spring, strawberries sell really high. Which brings us to our next point, cash crop. The idea that certain crops are unilaterally worth more than others and thus incentivizes you to completely focus on that singular crop or at least a good chunk of your field on that singular crop with the idea of I'm going to sell this and then just buy whatever else I need is a very simplified way of demonstrating what cash crops are. Cash crops used, bought, and purchased throughout the world it usually tends to be things like sugar or, gosh, even quinoa has been um, a new one these days. Nuts tends to be one that countries who are in a position where they've taken out um, loans from either the IMF or um, other international banking societies are then forced to grow as a part of their uh loan programs. Realistically, what these cash crops do is they're, they're often very bad for the landscape since it incentivizes you continuously growing and not allowing your fields to lie fallow. It promotes soil degradation and it also promotes the usage of either non-indigenous plants or you giving up your share of indigenous plants to then by non-indigenous foods that may not be the best for you or your family or even your culture as a whole to be consuming. Farmers and even, you know, casual gardeners can be at the mercy of economics and at home goods stores. If you accidentally sell something that you are saving for the community center and you have to buy it back from Pierre, or worse, if you have to then buy it back from that traveling merchant in the woods, that's really gonna hurt you. So there is a lot of pre-planning you have to do. This merchant only comes a couple times during the week. I'll be honest, I need to utilize the wiki in order to find them. Sorry, my file got corrupted there. Uh, what, so what this actually parallels is that in real life, we see that farmers, especially small scale farmers or family owned farmers, which really aren't the majority anymore because they've been bought out by larger corporate owned farms, they actually end up in an unfortunate cycle of debt, constantly having to buy new technologies, new equipment, new inputs, so basically a constant increasing amount of fertilizers, of pesticides, and of other things that are necessary in order to continue their baseline of production. 
all of the starting farms have some sort of a pond. And have you ever wondered why is it that you basically only catch garbage while you're fishing there? Once you learn how to put out the fishing pots, you can then catch like crawdads and things like that, but you never catch a real fish. Well, why is that? Many ponds suffer from eutrophication from fertilizers running off into the ponds. So this is actually something that farmers catch a huge amount of slack and stigma from to the point that there are in some areas quite some heavy regulation insofar as when you are allowed to lay your fertilizer down in your fields because of runoff from the rain. So you lay your fertilizer, your manure, whatever, it rains and then it washes off from your field, from your garden even, down the roads, down to the creek, the stream, the pond, and it can promote algal blooms, any sort of growth of plants which consumes lots of oxygen so that the local local animal population in that ecosystem can no longer thrive. I'm oversimplifying things. So it actually matches why you mostly can only find garbage in these ponds. Now I'm not sure how much oxygen something like a, a crawdad crawfish would need, but generally the larger things are, the more oxygen that we need. So getting more into development things, let's talk about the huge wealth disparities. So you actually have in town, you have Pam and her daughter Penny, who's one of the romanceable NPCs, are actually living in a trailer right behind the town mayor who has a golden statue of himself buried in his own backyard. In more recent updates, you're actually able to help subsidize and provide the building materials to build them a better house. While this isn't exclusive to farmers, when we look at issues of equity and issues of access around the world, we do see that there are, even on a local level, huge differences between neighbors and what they can gather across towns, basically anything on a micro or, or macro level. Going off of um, Feeding America, they said that one in five Americans will experience food insecurity, and now because of the pandemic, that's only on the rise. So to show a town where it seems like most people are in a decent enough position and then and then suddenly no one seems to comment on their one neighbors living in a trailer, yeah, that you can absolutely see that that that's absolutely an experience a real experience. Furthermore, the idea of then people having to rely on mutual aid, so the idea of your neighborhood coming together to help you out because government or current system is not providing to the degree that it ought to is also um, accurate. Is also something accurate that we're seeing right now in live time due to the pandemic. And what I mean by this is that, and of course it's different depending on people's layouts in the game, in real life you really do have farms that can be either totally livestock based, meaning that they may have several types of livestock, or they may raise just steer, or they may raise just pigs, or you may have a farm that is just an organic farm. Diversifying is, is, simply put, is going to be mixing up what you are planting or growing or raising on your farm that is going to help mitigate the many different types of risks. If you were to just have one particular kind of plant, you might be uh, at high risk from losing everything you've planted. But if you have even two or three types of things that you're growing and at the moment, or even if you plant multiple types of things together that all can work harmoniously, you don't have to worry as much as if the blight just takes out one of your crops. If you have several different types of vegetables growing, like say your local CSA, your local community sported agriculture program, then that's all the better because if one doesn't take off and grow very well, well then you still have others that maybe are um, in better sizes to be able to sell, so you still have other viable options. Let's talk about Jojo Mart's presence in the game. 
Jojo Mart very clearly represents the increasing corporatization and privatization of so many things going on in the world right now. In the game, it is what is at odds with Pierre's shop. They're trying to outcompete him. Many of the people in the town actually rely on it. Shane works there. Um, Pam also relies heavily on their supplies there. And you actually have the in-game option of whether to support the community center, which in turn shuts down Jojo Mart, or whether to buy a membership to Jojo Mart, which shuts down the community center. And while this again is oversimplified, when I talked about family owned farms being put uh, on the decline, it's realistically because they're being bought out by these larger corporate entities that you can't always critique in public. I do know even in the area where I grew up, uh, I remember the local dairy farmer talking about there originally being 17 farmers when he was a child. And then by the time my almost 10 years younger brother was born, uh, it was three farms total, his and two others, because everyone else had either been bought out or gone bankrupt. The next point, actually, there's so much controversy around seeds, which again is difficult to talk about in a public setting. See seeds, what kind of seeds to use? Are you allowed to save seeds? There are so many controversies around this in real life. So in Stardew, you're at the mercy of having to buy seeds from either Pierre or to go into the Oasis, but you are eventually able to make your own machine to be able to, to save your own seeds and to participate in seed saving. But there are so many farmers today who are not allowed to do this. So I don't know whether or not it was meant to create awareness for such a thing or if it was just supposed to be like a, a, a neat little in-game mechanic, um, but it is very interesting that that connection is made. If you would like to see a video about some of the inaccuracies related to farming or development, or if you would like to see a video about some tweaks that could be made in Stardew in order to make it realistic, not that I'm saying it should be made more realistic, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I have a puppy that is very antsy about needing a walk, so you have a wonderful day.